thank you for joining. Remember to hit that thumbs up button below. Your support really makes a difference. It helps us reach more people who can also benefit from the messages shared. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Real Relationship Talk, the podcast hosted by yours truly, Teresha Young, Relationship Master Coach, where we have open, non-judgmental, heart-to-heart conversations about love, self-love, self-care, dating and relationships. And guess who we have back on the show? None other than Mr. Greg Theron. Welcome back. Hey, hey, hey long time. It's been a while. November 2022. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. Where does time go? Where does, where does time go? I was looking back thinking, wow, that was season two, episode 15. Wow. You know, I feel like a, a little bit more seasoned in my podcast journey right now. So it's so great to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having so, me. You're so welcome. And for those of you who did not hear the episode between myself and Greg, I would strongly encourage you to have a listen. It was called Your Hormones Are Not Your Identity. In, ooh, I know, that conversation was as pure, pure gems and fire. So what we did touch upon in that episode was about diets, fad diets, and why perhaps we're not losing weight. And it's not just about the hormones there. Greg also touched upon perimenopausal and hormonal and grief, basically, and menopause grief during that conversation and how it can have an impact on our sense of identity and our purpose too. So definitely have a look. We spoke about goal setting. And not only that, Greg spoke a bit more personally about his definition of love and also about stop making assumptions in relationships and what exactly does a man want when he gets home. So that was a really great episode. I will link it in the description section below. But for now... Greg, I'm just going to introduce you again for people who don't know who you are and what you do, and then we'll just launch back into conversation. So, sounds Greg, good. what sounds good? Cool. Yeah, man, let's go. Let's rock. Let's, let's go. Let's do this. So, <laughs> Greg works with successful women who want to up level their health to match their goals in life. Greg has an extensive background in nutrition, exercise, and coaching, having worked with some of the top endocrinologist big word for me to say there greg thank you <laughs> and <laughs> got me all tongue-tied and women's health consultants at london's uclh greg uses unique methods of working with the mind and body to help you have the body that supports your dreams so greg could you just give us a little brief recap as to what led you to doing what you do now Okay, so the very brief story was this. Um, Growing up watching my mum and my sisters suffer with their weight and their health and seeing all of the BS that women get told about nutrition, health, fat loss, getting stronger. And then I went on my own journey because I started off as an overweight kid. I was the fat kid. Um, and then I got into sport and I saw how ma- how much it could benefit my life and how much it could help me. Um, and I went into martial arts. So I learned about Eastern medicine as well. And then I went to uni, did sports science degree. And then I did personal training on the side. So I then moved into leadership roles. Um, and then I, I kind of worked out that half the problem wasn't knowledge about what to do. Mm. The bigger issue is actually what's going on in people's heads. So I looked at my leadership coaching and all of that kind of stuff and said, well, you know, how can we blend it all together? Um, as I said, I worked at UCLA, so I spent some time with some people talking about hormones and understanding that. I've done functional medicine, functional nutrition. I think I've done it. I've done it all. I've done so many things I can't even remember now. And I just love watching and helping women glow up yeah. and love the body that they're in and give them a body that's capable of doing the things that they want to do in life. Mm-hmm. And that's why I call it the body. Yes, the million dollar body. Now, I have seen so many of your posts on social media talking about the million dollar body. Now, for those who are listening, can you explain more about that? Because it feels like such a transformative process that you've got going on there. Mm-hmm. 
Well, there's a couple of things, first of all. Obviously, the ladies that generally come to me are ladies who are already successful in other aspects of their life. And they're like, for some reason, they just haven't quite grasped their health. Mm. Now, let's be honest. Many women have been on diet since the age of seven, six, eight. It's scary out there. Yeah. And my Million Dollar Body Program is about helping you bring that successfulness that you've got in other areas of your life into your health with the practical knowledge as well, right? So it's how to eat, what to eat, but that's made unique for the individual. Yeah. And it's not just a weight loss program. Like I'm looking to, to I'm looking for you to become the CEO of your body and your mind. Mm. And that's how it's done. So I've got a process of how I take women through that, how I help you see the vision for yourself, how nutrition fits in, how training fits in. Um, and other bits and pieces to help you become the CEO of your body. So, yeah. I love that. And you spoke about the glow up. So what is stopping us women from putting our priorities into health and glowing up? You know, what's the challenges that you're seeing? This is, this is going to be big. So okay. let me let me get my phone ready because I need to... Oof. Right. Ooh-hoo. There's a couple of things, right? So one is society in general and if you think about it a lot of the time we've been told when we were younger that you can't have it all yes we're always taught you have to you can only have this bit of the pie you can't have that bit of the pie yeah you have to sacrifice this and that and growing up and especially you know my background as an as parent as uh, parents who are immigrants into the uk it was always they had to work all the time. And the minute you spent any time doing any form of leisure activity, there was like, go and find a book to do, go and find some work to do, go and find some, there was always some some work to do. So yeah. then your health is a byproduct. And if we understand that you're the summation mostly of the person you are between seven and 14 years of age, if you're always told that looking after your health and doing activities that are for your leisure and for your rest, mm. are you're going to get praise for, then these A-type women are going to always veer towards doing work. They're going to be up at night doing another sales page. They're going to be up at night doing another proposal. They're going to fit in that extra client because the subconscious story is, well, I only get rewarded for work. That's powerful because when you're talking there, I mean, I can relate. It's almost like health is a uh, nice to have rather than a need to have. And when we put it into that bracket, then we can have that whole purpose. Now, why, why would I focus on my health? Why would I focus on nutrition and fitness when there's other priorities that are more fundamental, which are you know, more crucial, more important to focus on? And also, I would say, you know, growing up from what I witnessed as well, you know, we just ate. There was no nutrition behind it. There was no macros. There was no measurements. There was no kind of, you know, make sure you have this portion of that, the protein and all of that. We just we just ate, basically. We just ate just big, basically. Um, and then also, you know, from my experience as well, when it comes to the eating habits when I was younger, we just you know, sat down, tray on a lap, um, tray on the laps. You know, it wasn't really a, a time for bonding. Too. Would you say that there is any benefit behind actually like dinner times, meal times, but actually having family units, if you have a family unit, come together? I think that's an element that's been lost in society now. We don't spend any time in that coming together. Like lunchtime, you've got the teenager over there with the iPad, you've got the kid over there doing whatever. The husband kind of comes in, maybe, and it's just a mess. Mm. Get everyone together. Because then you eat slower. Yes. Mm. You eat slower, you digest more. You digest the nutrients more. You enjoy the food more. The brain, so there's a big nerve that goes from the gut to the brain, the, ner- the vagus nerve. The gut and the brain can talk to each other and say, oh, maybe we're a bit fuller earlier. Okay. And then you stop. Mm. There's so many benefits. And even there's studies where you see people that are stressed 
they don't absorb nutrients. So and if you're eating in a stressful environment, so for most of the ladies listening to this, I guarantee you eat lunch with your laptop. So therefore you're not absorbing the nutrients properly from the food you ate. So no wonder why you're hungry and you're looking for a Kit Kat, you know, whenever things get a bit stressy because you haven't really enjoyed the meal before. So So that's about breaking habits as well, breaking habits, formulating new habits so that you don't sit down on the laptop eating that Kit Kat or if it's for me, it'll be a Snicker or something along those lines, something I really do, or a Twix, but let's not go there. Um, But yeah. I understand it's breaking and forming new habits. You've spoken about the mind and how it kind of starts with the mind. What type of mindset work do you encourage us to do as women to get us ready for us to be the CEO of our body? Well, the very first question is, who are you? Ooh. That's deep. Greg, go in, you're going, whoo. Yeah, we're not here for surface level business. We're here to Lovely. we're here to do. Tra- yes, who are you? Ooh. That takes a lot of exploration because you know that the answers that are going to come back. Wow, well, you know, I'm a mum. Um, maybe I'm an employee, or I'm a CEO. I'm a business owner. I'm a sister. I'm a uh, daughter. You know, you we, all of these hats that we wear. But the question is, like, when you get down, what, what hat are you wearing? What, what you know what does that look like well can I ask a question then just yeah. for you Teresha oh all of those things. yeah we're, we're gonna do we might as well do this now right hot seat coaching so are you not can you not be the athletic relationship master coach you see that's not a persona that I've even thought about even do you know what Greg I think it's sometimes the words that we associate with certain things right I know that you're a huge fan of Usain Bolt. And when I think of athletic, I think about running that 100 metres and running that breath and falling down on the floor at the end, like saying, (gasps) you know, what I think it's the energy and the associations that we have with those words. Like the word diet, for example, athletic. You saying that to me, I'm like, I'm not athletic, but I do cardio. I get on the treadmill or I, I might run or I walk. But the word athletic, no. Got it. So here's another question then. Mm. Would you rather your daughter refer to you as my mum was an athlete? Oh, hang on. That's a different thing. When you oh, said it, it, hey, because when you said it in that way, my word association with athlete felt so different to actually exercise. What that stood out for me is about being a champion, being a champion of my life being a champion of my vision, my goals, the connection with myself, the connection with other, my relationship. I feel like a winner. <laughs> so you're going to do some press-ups now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so exactly, some burpees. And yeah, just get my dumbbells out. Yeah, it's, it's funny that the way that you said that felt very different. But when mm-hmm. you said an athletic relationship coach, or relationship, it, it felt different to when you posed that question in a different way because that word athlete made me feel... Mm, actually like a champion yeah so it comes back down to why can't you have it all and that's great because exactly what you were saying before when we started this conversation that we're told that we can't have it all you know or we're not meant to have it all don't be greedy you know it's like don't don't have it all it's there's an element of Mm -hmm. sacrifice that comes out of it and i'm guessing what we were saying here is that unfortunately that sacrifice tends to be our health Always. 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 When I think about the Feng Shui Bagua and how that looks, health is at the centre of it all. No, if we don't have our health, then we don't have it all necessarily. That's how I see it. I think health, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to our career, when it comes to our finances, when it comes to whatever it is, it starts with us. Without health, then we know what that looks like. Health is wealth. So... It's it's changing that mindset. It's changing it so that we do prioritize it. And obviously, I follow your work, so I see that um, on social media and the types of people that I follow in the nutrition and health world. I see that it doesn't feel like it's readily expo- 
exposed out there? What can we do different as a society to make this a priority? Oh, I think it's going to take some very fundamental change in the way that society is, because obviously society values capitalism. That That's it. So everything is done, even our schooling is done at the behest of, can we create more work ants? Mm. Instead of queens. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, in the ants' nest or the bees' nest, the queen yeah. is the one that... But there's only whether one queen, but there's lots of work ants. Mm. You can have more queens in the colony. Yeah. So... And what we just did there a minute ago was also about how you explore the conversation. So we started off at one, and there's there's going to be a different angle for different people, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I think we need to give equal value to, right, you got a gold star, but well done. You, I see you do the, you did free PE three times this week. Like we don't give the non-academic stuff enough value. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can be as academic as hell. If you've got heart failure or you got you get diagnosed with diabetes, that doesn't care how many GCSEs you've got. It doesn't care how many A-levels you've got, how many degrees you've got. Yeah. Your body is failing you. Yeah. Your body trying to tell you something, trying to say, hey, look, if you don't make some changes, there's going to be trouble. We have a saying in Jamaica, those who can't hear must feel, right? Oh, yes. How many times I've heard that saying? <laughs> mm-hmm. So the body gives us signs. The body says, look, I've got this pain. The body gives us signs when we try to run for the bus and we're like, die, we have an asthma attack. The body is giving us signs when we can't lift our children or lift mm -hmm. the shopping. Or That's the body telling us that maybe you're not being as capable as you can be. Yeah. Now, what I found is this, whenever women come and work with me, the weight is, I don't really care about the weight. Like, I'm just going to say it loud and proud. Like, I don't give a damn how much you weigh. It's not about that. It's about what you're capable of. Because what happens is this. You start being capable of your body. Greg, oh, I'm lifting more. I've got more energy. My clothes are looking good. Look at me showing off my backless dress. Translates to you going on stage and rocking it like a badass. Mm. You start putting yourself out for more uh, opportunities. You start getting yourself more podcasts. You start going for promotion. I've had in the last year, I've had four women get six figure roles from our work together. Amazing. None, none of them have been bothered about their weight when they started with me. Mm. It's never about the weight. It was never about the weight. So we're going back to mindset there in a way mm -hmm. we're talking about mindset we're talking about i could imagine confidence it's mm -hmm. you know how they how they feel about themselves so back to that question then you know who am i that's identity work that really takes for them to sit back and to say it's never about the weight but i now have a new level of confidence that naturally will sp spill into them wanting to go up there and do the nutritional work and do the exercising and so forth so is getting down, is breaking it down. It's the layers. It's the onion, isn't it? It's peeling that onion, getting down, get taking off the layers, taking off the layers. Would you say there are any common challenges that you're seeing in your business, though? Like common mindset challenges? One, I don't deserve to invest in my health. Oh. That's, a big, that's a big one. Um. I'm going to just call it as it is. And I'm going to be raw and truthful for the audience, right? Mm. Fit and health information is to a penny. Mm. And there are so many programs out there and stuff, which is great. And what I found women will do is this. Business coach comes along and says, hey, I've got a 30K program with nothing in it. Right, by the way, it's this rubbish. We've seen it all, right? We've seen mm. the, the, the rest of it. People go and invest the 30K. And then it comes to investing 10K in their health and they're like, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. So it's like this thing about whether I deserve to invest it in me. But it's you that's going to make the money anyway. So if you're not in the best energy, in the best health, how can you make the money anyway? So it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So that's why I don't yeah. deserve 
invest in me. That's a big one. Number two, I failed so many times before. Mm. The story. So how I how do I deal with that? I don't really have failure in my program. Mm. There's no failure. Like if you go off track and you decide that you you're going to enjoy four pizzas, a Snickers. I prefer marathon when it's a marathon back in the day. Oh, sure you're going age. you're going way back there, marathon. Yeah, that's that's how that was the one back in the day. <laughs> um, but for me, it's about giving giving you space. To first of all understand what what happened, why what what was the reason that made you just go off track? Because here's the thing, nobody falls off the wagon. Oh, big! You're, you're busting all these myths right here. Oof. Go on, nobody falls off. Mm. Nobody falls off the wagon. Yes, there is an element of subconscious action that happens, but you know by the second bite that you're eating the chocolate bar. You know, even by the first chocolate bar. So we said we keep saying I fell off the wagon because it removes ownership away from yourself. You done this on the last episode as well, when you just dropped all of these oh mic drops and oh, but it's the truth. It's the truth. It's I, I don't see the point in lying. I don't see the point in you know. It's funny, right? People, ladies who be listening to this will talk about a hundred percent responsibility. But if we're going to have that, we have to have that in all areas of our life. We can't be a full, we can't be the CEO of us. We can't be that brand. We don't have that resonance and that um, consistency everywhere. So let's call it for what it is. Something happened. Stress at work, stress with the partner, with the family. Your go-to pattern to remove the feeling that is uncomfortable mm-hmm. is to do something. In that self sabotages. So it's not it's not that you fell off the wagon, you jumped off the wagon. <laughs> the wagon ride wasn't comfortable. So you said I'm gonna jump poly poly and bruise myself. Yep, exactly. You just clearly just you just jumped, you just bailed, leap of faith, gone. Yeah. But that's often, and this is one of the things I work with clients often is being comfortable with uncomfortable feelings. Yeah. Like we've been, we've got this societal thing now where we can escape everything. If I don't want to write that post, oh, where's my phone? TikTok. Yeah. That's the escape, right? That's the escape hatch. Yeah. Yeah. We have, and I'll, I'll, I won't talk too much to them, but there's, Fight and this flight characteristics kind of things we do. Mm. So avoidance is what I call a flight characteristic. The minute you start, you know, going to TikTok, I'll go in the cupboard for no reason. You're not hungry. It, that's an avoidance thing. That's flight. You're running away from it. Mm. Another thing we do is we try to bully ourselves. So these are, this is a fight characteristic. There's about eight of them. So we, we start telling ourselves, oh, you're stupid. You're an idiot. For eating that chocolate bar, blah mm. blah blah. Yeah, so you've got these opposites, and everyone's got their own ones. We all have them, yeah. but it's actually about the duality, and it comes back to: can you have everything? Mm. Yeah, because you can, but you have to be able to have the duality of the feeling of I'm bored, I'm upset. But I don't need to push it away. You can be part of me and I can still go and act in a different way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The gym is hard. I'm going to tell you now, I've been football, semi-pro football, athletics, martial arts, training since I was 12. Mm. The gym is still hard for me. You see, listen to Greg. Listen to Greg. The gym is still hard for Greg, and he's seasoned. I'm well seasoned. I'm well seasoned. Jerk, like, seasoned. Like, jerk seasoned, curry, <laughs> all purpose, everything. <laughs> everything. Uh, and I think this is a bit because you mentioned habits earlier. Yeah. So I think this is a big problem. 
people get sold that they're going to create new habits. Mm. Mm. Habits are things you do that are very easy and don't take much energy. You have ever walked out of your house and gone, did I turn the gas off? Did oh, I? Yes. Right. That's, that's a nice. habit. Mm. But you know, and you're like, you know, the house going to burn down. So you have to run back, drive back, etc. Yeah. Done it all the time. But that is because when you made the action to turn off the stove, it was so easy. Mm. Yeah. Going to the gym, making choices about your nutrition are rarely habits. Yeah. They are routines. Mm. You see the difference there? Yeah. So they're going to take energy. And I think that's the problem. We set these expectations that, oh, don't worry, in 12 weeks, you're going to have the, you're going to have the ultimate nutrition strategy. Day 12 and one day, week 12 and one day after the program, the person's back to their old habits. Mm. Yeah. So this is why I'm very much about the practical, the mechanical, eat this protein, eat these vegetables, drink water, blah, blah, blah. But you have to have the emotional with it. If you don't have the two together, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. So powerful what you shared there, because when you're speaking about the whole avoidance thing, like we can often as humans think about what we want to avoid rather than what we're moving towards. And what it is that we want to achieve, the dream, the goal, whatever that might be. But we're so focused on what we're trying to avoid. And we have that escapism, like you said, TikTok, whatever your go-to is, Netflix, wherever you want to spend your time doing something that you really could be doing something else of that is going to move you more towards what it is that you want to desire. Sometimes, though, people don't actually know what they want. Like, it's actually getting to that point to know what it is you desire and what you actually want in the positive as well. Because a lot of people think, well, I don't want to, but it's actually that forward thinking. What do I want in the way that I want to move forward? So let me, I, I, so this is a, a perfect little segue. This is perfect. 99% of women will come to me and say, Greg, I want to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm what like, you no, do? you don't. Uh huh. They don't. They don't. What do you mean I don't? I'm like, okay, let's talk about what you want rather than what you're trying to run away from. Yes. Yes. And once that question has been asked, this is what people say I want to feel good in my clothes. I want to look good naked with my partner. Or just, I wouldn't, when I get out of the shower, I want to be able to look at myself and be like, yeah, that's me. Mm. Yeah, I want to be on stages maybe and people are looking at me going, yeah, she's got it all together. I want to be the person that embodies what I tell my clients. Because there's a whole lot of coaches out here telling people, you need to look after your health and they ain't been for 10,000 steps ever. Mm, yeah, there's that integrity, huh? Exactly, yeah, it's that integrity, it's that alignment with self. So, you know, I want to be able to run around my grandchildren. Yeah. I want to be able to, you know, I've got a client, um, she's dropped 70 pounds. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. I know what that's like because I dropped 70 pounds between, in 12 months, between 2018 and 2019. So I know how you can feel after that. Yeah. It's amazing, right? What yeah. happens? And she's still got more on this journey to go. Like we've been working together for a, over a year now, must be a year and a half, maybe nearly. But she's not doing anything crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And what she said to me was originally, Greg, I want to lose weight. When we questioned it, well, actually, no, I've got grandchild coming soon. I want to be ready for that. Oh, okay. So now it's not the weight loss program. It's the grandchild ready protocol. Yeah. Yeah. So that's her million dollar body. Mm. Yeah. And what I find, too, is often when we get that clarity on what it is we want and how we want to feel when we're there, because as you said, it's the emotion that's going to really drive us forward. We can still sometimes have little blockages. And what I find with my coaching clients is that there's some form of secondary gain, I call it, that keeps them, keeps them doing anything they're doing. There's an advantage of staying exactly 
where they are. They might not even know it's unconscious, but there is something that still keeps them. They won't want it so much, but there's something that, so say, for example, let's say there's somebody who's a smoker, really want to stop smoking. But the advantage of not smoking is the social aspect they get from it. They get to go out on their lunch break or a fag break and they get to you know, have that bonding, they get to gossip, they get to do that. If they don't have that smoke anymore then they've lost something. So in your coaching experience, you, you're likely to find the same, that there's something that keeps people, quote unquote, stuck, even though we move. <laughs> or do we? Uh, I've got a client who I've worked with her for like, she's been a client for like three years now. Yeah. And whenever she goes back to Jamaica, they always say to her, oh, you, you, have you got sugar? So it's a, for those listening who don't know, it's an illness that we call in Jamaica. Um, and what the her first sticking point, when she kind of plateaued, I was like, you've got a trip to Jamaica coming up. And she was uh, like, how do you know? I went, I know. Because she's she was worried about what they thought of her. Yeah. So then we went back to, hey, who are you? Who's the person you are going to be? Mm. Oh, yeah. So it's about reinforcement, like re restating what's that why. Like pe- people ask me what's my goal. And I'm like, when I'm 90, I want to be able to kick my son's ass. Yep. Yes. Does your son know that? <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. He's going to come for you now. Bring it. <laughs> But that's what helps me get back in the gym the next day. So that yeah. when I'm like, I want my son to see that I'm independent and I can look after myself. So therefore, that means I go to the gym. That's my identity. Yes. Yeah. And it's a routine. It takes energy. I get it. But it, what happens is it becomes a thing that I do regardless of my emotional state. A little bit like brushing your teeth, right? No matter how you're feeling, I would hope that you're going to get up and you're going to brush your teeth. And it's just something that you do, no, no matter how you feel. Okay, I know there's some people who can experience deep depression and you know, t- those exceptions you put to one side. But typically, oh. typically, you know, most people are getting up and doing it. So it's that routine. It's that, you know, you can even turn it into something that's quite ritualistic. Like really start to feel, you know, into something. Create the excitement around going to the gym. If you think it's hard and you don't want to do it and you feel it's hard, how can you make that an exciting experience? What can you do before the gym and maybe after the gym to make it feel like it's something to be excited about? Get into that feeling and that energy of it. Because when you were talking there, Greg, what came to me was the whole set. We spoke about the experiences that can actually create the story that I felt before and all of that kind of stuff. So in order for us to have that drive to keep going, surely it's about recognising our wins and celebrating mm-hmm. those things too. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask another question now then. You just made me think. Okay. Where's the gym? Where's your gym, Teresha? It's about a good 10-minute drive from my house. The actual no, physical not. gym. <laughs> no, no. The gym's in the mind, right? The gym is your body. My body. Mm. It's a bit like when people say, where's church? And they say, oh, I'm not going to go there, actually. Oh, 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 I'm not going to go there. I'm going to get a few people. Yeah. That's right. The church is in, be- is in between your two ears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that same thing. When I say to people... If you've got gym anxiety, so many of the ladies here might have gym anxiety about going to a physical gym, blah, blah, blah. The stuff in that building are just accessories to the fact that you can move your body in a meaningful and intentional way every day. Mm. Every day. You are the gym. It's you that does the squat. It's not the machine. It's you that has to do the squat. So whether you do 20 or 30 squats in your house, no biggie. But what we have to remember is that we are the gym. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where you go. And I love that because I am on your email list too. Look, I'm like a, bit, I'm like a fan girl. Like I'm, I'm following you everywhere. Uh, you're omnipresent in my world, in my life. And I see, I'm like, go, go, Greg, go client. 6 a.m. starts, like workout. So are you saying that for those women as well, that their gym is necessary, is at home as well? 
you know, it's their body. They could be working out at home, wherever it is. You don't actually have to get to that physical gym at 6 a.m. in the morning to do your thing. So I have a group of ladies that obviously before COVID, I used to have a physical boot camp. Um, there was about like 20 odd ladies that used to come to that. Obviously COVID happened and I was panicking. I was like, what am I going to do with all these ladies who love to work out? They love getting stronger. We just moved on Zoom. So now we don't even have, they don't have to worry. So six o'clock, three times a week, a group of my clients jump on Zoom. I set the program. We train. I love that. Would you say that there is power in having a sisterhood, having a community when it comes to our health? Because I would say when you think about the level of oxytocin, I'm going to go there, hormones, oxytocin, that can come from being around other people as well. That can reduce our cortisol levels and and help us to feel. So would you say that there is power in actually doing this with other people? Community is power in everything. If you want to go far, go with others. Simple as that. Love that. Absolutely. It's very simple. Mm. That, whether that's your business, even even your relationships, right? Don't go and double date the toxic couple. Like, no, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hang around with, hang around people who are aspirational in their relationship, who are doing the things that they want to do that are helping them grow as a couple and as individuals, then it's the same thing for your health. Mm. Who in your black book of people is, is going, right, I'm, I'm working out because I feel good. It helps me make better decisions. It helps me thrive in my business, helps me thrive in my relationship, helps me not kill the kids when they piss me off. Mm-hmm. Like, who are those people? Go hang out with them. Yeah. There's, a, there's a saying somewhere that says, only hang out with people that are helping your growth of income, your growth of your health, and the growth of your relationships. Mm. You need those three in your life, those people in your life. So community, massive. Like my clients are all crazy. They all they bully me. I think they bully me. Really, I'm gonna. Mm. I hope they all listen to this. They're bullies. Oh, right? it, do you hear that? <laughs> You're bullies, and this isn't the workplace. So don't worry, you've got no claim coming against you. <laughs> oh. Um. It's funny because some of my clients are like, hey, one's a HR director, one oh, does <laughs> diversity. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. We're talking about practicing what you preach, huh? Yeah, one's legal counsel for a company and it's like, okay, cool, I've got you, I'm watching you. Yeah. But yeah, community is massive. Um, and the same for me, you know, in my, in the, my coach, she has a massive community and I've actually got two coaches in my life, actually. So, so yeah, two coaches. And I value the community much you know mm. so yeah yeah so this is the Ooh, whole you're, you're like i watch you i'm watching you grow oh, as well you. so thank you very much i'm all about community you know being a relationship master coach as well i'm all about building relationships with myself you know i think the relationship that you have with yourself is the most important relationship i think most people would agree with that but then also my connections with other people i love a sense of community i love the 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 commodity that comes out of it the interconnectedness we're in a global world now because we are in the global world too we get fed so much information as you said there is a lot of information out there that a lot of the work that we can do becomes i call it shelf development rather than actually doing something with it another another fad another story we read it put it on the shelf we don't actually do anything about it which actually is probably a good segue greg into your post on linkedin today where you have said the body you want is created by doing what has to be done despite your emotions practicing true self-love for your body action over perfection being consistent when others told you to stop it's how you built your business. The same rules apply to your body. Tell me more about that. Because I said, oh, keep it moving. And you said, kind of, kind of. So would you care to share a bit more about that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things on off that. And you know I like to tease you when you comment on my posts. I, I know like you do. You. you bully me. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there, keeping it real, you know, transparency. No, you don't really. We tease each other. We're, I, we're ninjas. I, I bow to your ninjaness. Um, 
what I'm going to say is this. No, there there is an element of keeping it moving. So one of my kind of mentors, one of the people I look up to, he has this thing he calls the four doctors. Okay. So four doctors of health, Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, Dr. Movement, and Dr. Happiness. Okay. And it's like, you know, it's like a wheel, I guess. But if one of those is out, then the others are all going to be affected. So you can't be a happy human unless all of those are working nicely in a nice little spoke, a nice little wheel. So where you say keep it moving, awesome. So that's doctor movement. You need that in your life. Yeah. But on the opposite side, you also need doctor choir. Yes. So the world at the minute is very obsessed with working out. Mm, yes. Are you working in? can be scary though to go within because as you said that means we have to take responsibility be accountable for what might show up that means we have to do some deep work there might be things that activate us you know patterns traumas those kind of things it can be quite a scary business to go within especially if you're not being guided right this is why you get coaches oh, God, I kind of led you into that one <laughs> i know but that's why i said i've got to Two coaches, right? And I've been yeah. in long-term relationships with one. I think it's been like five, six years with one. The other is coming up to a year. Because what I've realized is I can hit goals. I can hit the goal I wanted to hit, wherever, wherever it is. But as my coaches grow, I grow. So it's yeah. like if there's there's lots of this um get the body you want in 12 weeks kind of thing. And I've I used to talk about that because I felt that's how I had to talk to my market and I realized I did some analysis mm. I've got a client who's been with me for nine years yeah and I was like that's a bit weird what's going on here <laughs> then I look and I and I've over my years of working most of my clients work with me for at least two years once yeah. they're in my world yeah and I was like oh, okay. I thought I had to get them fit in 12 weeks and then kick them out what I realized is that People that value coaching and mentorship stay, they make better progress because the thing that I taught them in the week one gets lost and forgotten about. And we need to revisit it for it to become stronger. The life cycle. Well, yes, yeah, so it goes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I found anyway. And I found that as well. And I've got a client that I've been working with her since May 2022. We're on our 253rd session. And she is it's like MOT basically it's just keeping it going like a car you have a car you just get it keep it serviced you keep the MOT going on it so that some clients will actually be with us for accountability and also just to help them recognize their blind spots because we have blind spots we can develop new blind spots because we are in an evolving world we are evolving people so I totally get why some people actually will be longer then, for example, 90 days or 10 weeks or 12 weeks or whatever. I, I hate, do you know what? I hate all of that stuff now. Like, it, it actually bores me. Mm. Like, I don't actually care about the the 12 week thing anymore. It's just like, no. People have got such, there's a starting line of readiness for most people. Most people think they're at the starting line. And that's not a disrespect to anybody. Mm -hmm. But when, when they come into my world and we start to uncover some of this stuff, we realize that actually they weren't at the starting line. They're behind it. Yeah. And that's okay. Too. That's perfect. That's perfect. I, I love that. I would rather have 50 clients who are open and honest and willing to learn and willing to explore than ones who are just like, yeah, let's just do this. No, 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 no. Let's do this. We're doing transformative work here. Transformative. And that's what it is. The, I don't think you can put a timescale on necessarily transformation because it is a journey. And I think because we are in this society, this microwave mindset, I call it, we want it quick, we want it fast. When we put things, it looks marketing wise, it looks so appealing. When it comes to health, we have to be, or when it comes to most things, I say, we have to be so realistic in terms of have the patience. And it will happen. Those one percent gains will compound. It will come to one hundred percent. The compound effect. If you just keep doing the work, for example, on yourself, and 
as you said, that starting line might look a little bit different. Once you start to notify uh, or notice people's patterns, because as coaches, we like to look at data and patterns, right? And <laughs> I'd like to go into detail. That's when you really start to unpack things and it starts to show up. Oh, so as you said, every time you go to Jamaica, I've noticed a pattern. Oh, you didn't notice that I noticed a pattern, but I know you're going to Jamaica because you've done something different. So that's the beauty of having coaching and having another person see that because they do notice your blind spots. We can do the self-inquiry ourselves anyway. And so even if you don't have a coach, we can still look at our habits. So every single time you reach for that marathon or you reach for that, that snicker, what happened before that? I want to look at what was happening in your life, in your world, before you went and got that. So was there a level of stress going on? Is, is there some sort of pattern or common? Every time I go for it, then what do you do? I eat the snicker. Okay, then what happens after that? I beat myself up afterwards and I say that I failed. Well, is it failure or is it feedback that you're getting? I just believe that it's all feedback, it's information. What can you do about it? We can empower ourselves. And it sounds like your million dollar body program. I know it's got the word body in it, but it goes deeper. It- oh, yeah. It's, it's much deeper. Don't get me wrong. I can write you a badass program that you go to the gym and you'll be like, oh, wow, this is this is how you train. Mm. It's important. Nutrition, how you eat, massively important. Sleep, massively important. My thing is, though, you have to bring the body and the brain together. You can't have one without the other. They both work together. In fact, the brain is in the body anyway. Mm. Every cell in your body is talking to your brain right now. So if you're not nourishing the body, then the brain is being starved of nutrients. Mm. And then the brain can't act in the way that you want to. So when you're tired and you're at work and you're like falling asleep or you can't get that idea out of your head, it might be because of how you're eating, how you're sleeping. But if you're going to be the CEO, you have to eat like the CEO and show up like the CEO. So this is self-leadership. So true. It's so true. When you delve into it, a lot of people just think it's just, it is just the food, but there's so many different components. There is the sleep element that I know when I come up on your post, I'm always talking about could get a little bit more sleep. And but that's that's a whole other thing. Go on. <laughs> I can't let this go up because you bullied me. Earlier. <laughs> I tried to go fast along that one. Yeah. Fast forward. We really we need to go, Greg. No, no. All I'm going to say is, for whatever reason, maybe you don't put such a value on sleep. And I'm going to blame our parents for this a lot of time. Okay. When we were younger, I, I'm going to talk about my parents now. I'm old. My parents would say, you have to go to bed. It will make you big and strong. Awesome. So why are you up watching Dynasty? That's so funny. That's so that's so funny. Dynasty, I know from my parents' world, they were up watching, there was a show. Do you remember it? I'm not sure. Tales of the Unexpected. Yes, I remember that. Yes. Oh, yes. Gosh, on I think it was UK Gold. <laughs> I'm sure in some age there too. But yeah, so it's like leading by example. But also again, it's there is there is boundaries. And I think this episode we've spoken about boundaries of ourselves. And then also just boundaries with other people, your social networks, don't be hanging out with people who aren't necessarily going to move you forward in terms of, or if you are going to hang out with those people, it's managing your time and your energy around those people. So just using our discernment, really, when it comes to those things. And equally, I do feel like if our parents were to better, maybe, not all parents, but if they were to better explain why, the why is so important. The why, I always say, will make us fly. Yes, we're big people. We're going to stay up. Right, you're not a big person. The reasons why is like just delving it a little bit more. Otherwise, we just feel like we're just being told what to do, you know, as kids. Well, you know what it is, then, don't you, right? Kids see everything. Yes. So you have to remember, right? So you know me, I'm all about tigers, one of my favorite animals. Mm-hmm. How, do, how do tiger cubs learn to hunt? There's no, there's no vocal communication. It's not like here's a diagram. They watch in the, they stay in the bushes and they watch mum hunt then they practice it. The mm. so same for we want our family. If we want people, if we want our kids to do what we do, it's all good and well telling them to exercise. They need to see you exercise. Yeah. 
you can talk the talk all you want, but then they're not going to listen. They're not going to get it. And then you're like, why is my kid not doing the thing that I told them? Because they're not seeing you do it. Greg, you know, the gems, the mic drops, all of that stuff that you've been doing today. I could talk to you forever because even you, when you said that, it's that wider piece of communication. It's kind of like the things that you're not saying, but you're showing the non-verbal aspects of it. So the kids can actually see you doing the exercise. Well, they might not see you working out, they might see you come home sweaty, but they know that you have done some form of, they might see you at home doing the workout, whatever it is. This, is. this is the thing. If you're a woman who's time poor yeah. and you you come to me and say, your reason is you can't get to the gym because of time. I'm going to tell you to go and do your workout with the kids. See? Yeah. You kill the birds with one stone. You have to leave them. You're role modeling the behavior that you want them to see. And you're becoming, you're becoming the CEO you want to be of yourself. People love that as well. People, even if they find it really hard to connect with their own personal mission, doing something that is outside of yourself can really be encouraging for people so knowing that you're doing it and you're doing it with the kids you're doing it for the kids that can sometimes be enough drive to say okay for me I might not do it by myself but when it comes to the kids is that is that sense is like that sense of community that was talking about you know we come together you, you build that sense of community I like that I like that. It's um, you know, connecting to maybe something bigger outside of yourself. And what you were saying there, actually, before, Greg, is that you know, often when we think about what it is you want to move towards, it is a case of, well, people say, I want better relationships or I want to be able to kick my son's ass in the gym when I'm 90. It usually does involve another person or people. So if, for example, sit down, I would say, I'm going to do a little bit of you know, guidance here. If you stay exactly where you are right now, who is it going to impact? Because sometimes we have to think about who is it going to impact? Now, if you move yourself forward, for example, and you are moving yourself in the direction of what you do, who who is that going to impact and how is it going to impact them? Really go, really go into it because that could be the drive that you need just to get you started, just to get you moving. So that's my little Mm -hmm. two bits that I'm going to throw in there it's always going to come to that thing of what is it costing you like yeah. what is what what is the cost of staying still so what is the cost of not going for that 10 minute walk what is the cost of not drinking that glass of water mm. and it might seem like but eventually it will add up when you've got kidney stone <laughs> yeah when 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 your performance in your career is dropping when you're snapping at your spouse because yeah. when you're your performance of work is dropping. That's your body talking to you. Your body's talking to you and saying, hey, hey, listen, I want to work for you, but you got to give me the environment to thrive. Oh, beautiful. You know what? It's that quiet quadrant that you were spoken, speaking about before as well. Go within, do the work. And if you're not sure where to start, Coach Greg. <laughs> Coach Greg is the person to reach out for and I've seen his testimonials I've seen the great feedback that he gets from people so Greg is doing some great things he's already shared with you some of the transformational work that he's doing with his clients he's got long-term relationships he's working on himself too so take that on board and I would just say Greg that this has been such a delightful conversation again you have dropped so many so many wisdoms and insights and everything like that so thank you for being such a wonderful guest, as always, as I knew you would be. Having me. Yeah, Having you're so welcome. So I do have a part in tradition on my show whereby I do ask my guests one key takeaway that they can leave the listeners on. I know that one. Because, you know, I would hate to think that people are going to skip to the end of the conversation. But if they did, what would be one key takeaway that would help them along their journey of love, life and relationships? In whatever you do, ask yourself, who are you being in that moment? Being, not doing, being. Greg, thank you. Thank you so much. It's a powerful question. If the listeners or when the listeners want to reach out to you, where can I find you? Where are you hanging out? 
Um, normally hanging out on Facebook or on LinkedIn are my two platforms. Um, I do have a, a nice little freebie, a seven day um, guide to, to help you get your nutrition on track. So yeah, those are the places you can find me. I do have a podcast. I'm going to bring it back soon. It's coming back. Good, good, as good, well. good. Yeah, but those will be the places you can find me. Absolutely. Greg's podcast is fantastic. I was a guest on his show too. So follow his work. I'm going to drop Greg's links into the description section as well so that you know how to find him and where to follow him. And I would strongly encourage you and invite you to do so. So, Greg, once again, thank you so much for having a chat, a conversation. Yes, again, I'm sure. Let's not leave it. Come on now, almost like one and a half years. So we'll have to. Yeah, we're moving into season seven soon of my show. So let's, let's see. What oh, wow. I know. My pod- it. Podcast game. I'm like, um, yeah, I need to- <laughs> I'm coming for you. Um, actually, I'm coming for Stephen Bartlett, but don't tell him. But yes. Okay. Don't get me started on that podcast. I, 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 I saw I saw one of your, I saw one of your <laughs> Let's not go there before I get shut down. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or Eddie Abu. Oh Lord. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's a whole that's a whole other episode. That's a whole nother episode. We're gonna keep it here. So Greg, once again, thank you for your time today. Thanks. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And for everybody else who has listened to the show, I want to thank you for your time, for your attention and for your energy. And until the next episode, take great care of yourself and others too.